Hello, dear church. It's good to be with you, even in this way. I pray that you're all doing well, as well as can be in the midst of all that's going on in our world, or with this pandemic, or just normal life, whatever normal may look like for you. Recently, one of our youth asked me, is it okay not to be okay? I had to ponder that question and think about it for my own self as I answered. My answer was, it is absolutely okay not to be okay sometimes. Maybe you felt like that in the midst of these pandemic days, maybe especially with the racial injustices happening around our nation. Maybe you felt like that with your own family or in your workplace or with yourself. It is okay not to be okay. But it's not okay to think that you're all by yourself in that not being okay. We don't always have to have it all together or to have all the answers. If this pandemic has showed me anything, it's that. Dr. Michael, Michael Osterholm, who's a leading epidemiologist and a Lutheran, shared on a broadcast last week. He said, I know less about COVID-19 now than I did six weeks ago. When he said that, it was startling and stunning and shocking to me because I know how much we dearly want to get back into our worship and our physical buildings, to go back to our fellowship times, to be able to freely go to restaurants and have dinner at folks' homes and to go on vacation without worry or concern. I want all that too. And yet, Dr. Ulsterholm is right. We know less about this virus in some parts, it seems, now than we did six weeks ago. And I think that's okay. But what's not okay is that we don't continue to be safe about it. We have to continue to practice social distancing, physical distancing, that is. We have to continue wearing our mask in public not so much because of ourselves, but for the love of our neighbor. Yes, it might be uncomfortable. It might even feel weird. It might even look weird. But if we all do it, think of how less weird it will feel and look. Think of also the thousands of people that we will help and keep healthy, not to mention ourselves. And think of just by doing that, we help reduce the spread of COVID-19. In the four states we have in our Senate, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Alabama, COVID-19 has increased in many of those counties. And we've seen upticks, especially in these summer months. As you make plans to phase back in to worship or Bible study, or any sort of gathering of any sort of kind, I dearly implore you, please be safe. Please be mindful. Please know as much as we want all those things to happen, we also want for people to remain healthy and safe and not become sick or ill or even worse, die because of coronavirus. It might mean that you have to phase down instead of phasing up. It might mean you have to go back to phase one before you move to phase two in your plan for re-entry into worship or re-entry into other gatherings. Please be mindful of those things. Continue to check our Senate website out for details at www.elca-ses.org under COVID response at the top. Lastly, I leave you with these words. You'll hear them in Sunday's gospel. They come from Jesus. Come to me, all ye that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 
for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Dear ones, pandemic fatigue is a real thing. It's a real thing for, for you and for me and for all of us of any age. Be gentle to one another. Be gentle to yourselves. Take breaks. Take pauses. Take rest. And know that in all things, we can bring whatever burden we have to God. As Jesus reminds us, come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. May you find rest even in the midst of these strange days we live in. May you find rest in God. Amen.